This picture is actually showing two things, both of which are very important. Now, I always joke with people that if you're not sure what to say in science, always say the sun. But really, that's not too much of an exaggeration. All right, so because of the Earth's tilt at a 23.5 degree axis, which I'm attempting to show in my little graph picture in the top right there, the equator always receives the most direct sunlight no matter what season it is, all time of the year. The North and South Pole always receive the least amounts of sunlight. So if the Earth were directly uh, straight up and down on its axis, the warm air, which is always rising at the equator, would rise and rise and rise and eventually lose some of its energy and cool down by the poles. But because of the Earth's tilt on its axis and the Earth's rotation, the winds in the northern hemisphere are always bending to the right and the winds in the southern hemisphere are always bending to the left. This is called the Coriolis effect because a gentleman named Coriolis came up with this idea. If you look at my picture in the top left here, that's showing how the low pressure, uh, low density, really warm air from the equator is rising, that's why I use red arrow, and flowing towards the poles. But the cold, high pressure, high density air from the poles is sinking and flowing back towards the equator in the same way. So this is showing how global convection works on Earth. This picture is showing how jet stream works. Jet streams are really high speed winds just around the top of the troposphere at about six to seven miles. In the northern hemisphere, the jet stream winds always blow from west to east. So if you're flying an airplane from California, let's say, to Ohio, you can go faster going west to east than you can going the exact same distance from east to west. So pilots like to fly in the jet stream going west to east so that the wind will actually push against their plane and kind of guide it along. But on the way back from uh, east to west, they like to flow, fly either above the troposphere or below the troposphere uh, at around six miles to seven miles so that they can avoid the jet stream. 